Okay, so this is the first episode in a series on the Postman REST client. The Postman REST client is a, a Chrome extension available for free at the Google Chrome store. Now, as you can see here, the Postman REST client, you uh, download it for free and it will uh, install itself. You can run it from inside of Chrome or from the desktop, which is how we'll be running it today. So, we go in here, and we run a Postman launcher, and Postman comes up. Postman is, it's a handy program for making API calls, uh, REST-based API calls. So in this case, we put in our URL, which is tableapiheroku.app.com slash payment item slash one. Uh, we set our content type to JSON, and we set our op authorization token uh, for security. Then we can run send, and that will return to us the payload for payment item one. Uh, you can also so uh, we can also run post. Uh, where we have, and you can copy the data from the raw section and put it into your header data. Uh, you want to remove the ID and the self-link, which will be created by the post depending on what the ID is. And then we're going to run a send. And in this case, we get back a 201 saying that the post was created. And to see the, the URL for the post, we click on the header tab, and then we go to the location. Now that item exists. We can put that into our URL, and we can run a get. And that will return us our newly created resource. Now, the second thing we can do with it is we can run a put, and we put, we put the Again, we can copy the data from the raw section. However, with the put, we want to make sure that we keep the ID and the rel link, the self-link, uh, valid. But we can come in here and make updates. So, $350, for instance, uh, in this case, we're going to change, and now we're going to call send, and then we get back a 200 saying that it was successful, and we get back the payload with the $350. And just to verify that, we can run a get on the same header, and again we see that we get $350 back in the payload. And lastly, we can run delete, which will return a 204, which is standard, no content. And if we run a get again on that payment item, we get back not found because we deleted the resource. So that's all well and good for building simple applications, but when you have a, a number of applications, uh, it's, it's, it's easier when we've got our history of what we've been doing, but we click on the Collections tab and we create Add a New Collection, and we're going to call it API Test. You can describe it, Test of the Cable Labs. API. We'll create that test. And then we can go in here and we'll start with payment item slash one, which is the default. We'll keep our, our JSON and our authorization token. And we can run a send to make sure that it works. And then we click the button that says add to collection. And we Select the collection we want to add it to. You can you can have more than one collection open at the same time. And we're going to call this payment item. And you can put in a description, payment item API call. And click add to collection. And now our payment item is inside of the collection. 
If you want to make updates to it, you change this to a 2, you can hit save, and now you go in here, it works. So let's go back to 1. Um, for brevity's sake, I am going to delete that collection and I'm going to import a collection that's already been created. The collections are simply JSON files, which you can drag in here and import. Sorry, I didn't need to click that second time. So now we have all of the currently existing APIs. If you look through, you can uh, run a get on any of them and it gives you back your payload. And we could go through and do posts and puts and deletes as we did before on any one of these. So that gives us our collection. Now we can export this collection by clicking the share button and then downloading it and it will allow you to get, to save it whatever test.json uh, you want to you want to be it dot json the by default it adds a postman collection but that's not necessary and you can save that file and if we go over here and look at it we look at it inside of a text editor we'll see that it's just a a normal JSON file that describes the API collection. All right, so that sounds all well and good, uh, but there's also some interesting features uh, inside of Postman that makes our lives easier. And the first thing that we're going to talk about is the variables. So you can add presets uh, to make your life a little easier, and we can go into Manage Presets. And we've already created an API key earlier. So what we put in here is authorization. And then we can put uh, this variable key, which we're going to define inside the environment. And what that allows us to do is we can come in here and say API key. And it will add that key for us. Uh, now, the nice thing about these variables is if you go into an environment, right? So uh, you click Manage Environments, and you can create multiple environments. So in this case, we're using the remote host. So we can click here, and we see that we've already set the key, which is what's inside the brackets, and then the token that we're using, the API key that we're using. Now, we've also defined this interesting variable called base, which is pointing to the cable API Heroku app.com base URL. Now, the second environment that we're going to create is localhost. Localhost has the same key, and then it has also a base, but this base is referred to the localhost, which is the local version of the REST server if you're running it locally in development mode. So now, that means we can come in here and we can change the host so that it's running with the variable rather than the, 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 the full out URL. And you'll see that we still get our ID. Now, if I switch my environment to localhost, now it's going to go after the local variable, the local server, which I'm not currently running. So you'll see that you get an error back. Now I can come in and run the local environment. Run it in, uh, in Jetty. I'm going to go... directory there we go so if we run run our local rest server from inside of here give that a second to start up
And so what that's going to do is when we come in here and we click on send, then we should get our, we should get back a, a, a payload rather than an error because now the local host is running. All right, so now that's running and we click send. And now we get back our local host version. And we can switch back and forth between local host and remote host as much as we want to. Now, one problem that we have is that we're going to have to go through and change this in every case. And that is not not fun. It's a little tedious. So one thing that you can do is you can export your file just like we did here in our test JSON file. And we can open that up in our text editor. So if we look, now we can do a global find and replace. And you can do it in your text editor, or you can do it in a in a development environment or whatever whatever you would like to do. Um, so we're going to come in here and we're going to find all the instances of tableapi.heroku.com and you can just replace find that. And we're going to replace it with open bracket, open bracket, base. And notice that the variables always have two open brackets, and that's partially to differentiate it from JSON itself so that it knows that it's a variable. And we're going to replace all. And then we're going to come in here and we're going to find our API key. And we're going to replace that with the variable key, which notice we, we name both variables the same in both environments, which makes it seamless depending on regardless of which environment you're using. So we're going to go ahead and save that. Close this out. We're going to get rid of our old our old collection and now we're going to import this new chest by dragging it in and close this out. And then now we can come in here and we'll see base, base, and key. So all of these now work in the remote environment and in the local environment. So that's just some, some uh, tips. And you can use these variables for pretty much anything. Uh, either you can generate, uh, you, can, you can put any environment you want to inside of your, your environment, any, any you know, any kind of variable you wanted to use. Uh, if you wanted to use something specific inside of your payload, you could do that. Um, if you wanted to use it for specific IDs in the URL, you could do that. Um, so that's, that's it in a nutshell.